as we glorify. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I think we have four out of the six guys here up in that picture. We have Jesse, we have Brett, and then we have Brother Dwayne in the back. And um, Brother Jace moved to Washington, and then Brother Rod Earls is, isn't here today. He lives in Merced. Might be traveling, not sure. He's, he's preaching. Oh, he's actually preaching. So, yeah, that's awesome. But before I even get to our story of Guatemala, I want to share about one of the greatest um, missionaries in the Bible, and that's the Apostle Paul. So if you all turn, turn with me to um, Romans chapter 15, verse 23. Romans chapter 15, verse 23, I'll be reading out of the NLT version. The Bible says, But now I have finished. The Bible, Romans 15, 23. But now I have finished my work in these regions. And after all these long years of waiting, I am eager to visit you. I am planning to go to Spain. And when I do, I will stop off in Rome. And after I have enjoyed your fellowship, remember these are the Romans, for a little while, you can then provide for my journey. But before I come, I must go to Jerusalem to take a gift to the believers. The New King James Version says he's going to go to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. And I'll pause there for a minute. You know, keep your finger there. And let's turn really quick to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. And I, and I pause there because I see that Paul here is taking a gift to the believers. And what he's doing, he's actually taking his own advice. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, he says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, you will reap a harvest of blessings if you don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. There's a word especially there. You know, it's really, really good to do good to all men, right? But he says, especially to those of the faith. You know, yes, it's good to, to do good to unbelievers, to give to them, to share. But if the family of believers are in need, that's who we help. And, and that's what Paul's doing here in the book of Romans. So let's go back to Romans now. Romans 15, we left off on... Um, Verse 26, I'll read 25 again. Before I come to, to the Romans, I must go to Jerusalem to take a gift to the believers there. For you see, the believers in Macedonia and Achaia have eagerly taken up an offering for the poor among the believers in Jerusalem. So we have two churches here who are willing to help a poorer church. Verse 26, the believers in Macedonia and Achaia are also obeying Galatians chapter 6. They're helping, they're helping the family of believers, right? In fact, was it 27? Verse 27, they were glad to do this because they feel they owe a real debt to them. Notice that they are glad to be helping the family of believers. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, You should each determine in your heart how much to give. Do not give up reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. And here we see that the Macedonians and the, the church in Achaia, they're glad to be giving to a poorer church. And, and it reminds me of the voice of the Pope. 
It really does. You know, we're a really, really small church. And yet, you know, Pete talked about the Lottie Moon and how much money was raised to help the less fortunate brothers and sisters. We also do the, uh, the Operation Christmas child every year. And then you also donate for the Guatemala trip. So when I read when I read this, how eager and how glad they are to help, I think of you. Verse 28. Oops, I was at 27. Let's go back to 27. They were glad to do this because they feel they owe a real debt to them. Since the Gentiles received the spiritual blessings of a good of the good news from the believers in Jerusalem, they feel the least they can do in return is help them financially. And I know that many of us, you know, we can't be going to Guatemala, but the least we can do is help financially. You know, we Lottie Moon are helping financially, and that's what they're doing here. I mean, they, they can't travel with Paul, so they're helping. They're helping one way. Obviously, they're helping with prayer, but they're also helping with her financially. Verse 28, as soon as I have delivered this money and completed this good deed, I will come to, to see you on my way to Spain. And I am sure that when I come, Christ will richly bless our time together. And notice how excited Paul is here to see, you know, the Romans. But he's excited to, to, to visit Jerusalem. He's excited to go to Spain. He's excited to go to, to Rome, his plans. But he can't wait to see the Romans. And when I read this, I thought of Pastor Jesse. I don't know, if, have you guys ever heard him talk about Guatemala trip? He gets very, very excited, right? A little too excited. <laughs> <laughs> you know, last summer... We were driving, and he asked if I was willing to go to Guatemala. And he was very excited. I, you know, I just, I, I couldn't share his joy. I didn't understand the joy that he felt. And I remember him talking about Guatemala to me. He was so excited. He told me to bring toys, bring extra clothes, you know, to get to the less fortunate, bring tools, bring gloves. Bring supplies, you know. Bring some of your clothes that you don't want to, that you don't wear anymore. And believe me, we have a whole closet full of it. And he just gave me this whole list, and you know. And at the time, I didn't share his joy. And in fact, to be honest, I didn't even take that serious. And I, I just did. I didn't understand. And I. I'm hoping that by the time we finish this this message, we'll uh, we'll be able to all share with the same thing, the joy that he felt. But if I only understood why he was asking me to bring toys and, and candy and, and goodies, I would have done it. But I didn't. In fact, I started having second thoughts about the trip. I even started to question within myself. And maybe you've had this question before. I started to question. Why Guatemala? Why not Riverbank? You know, why are we traveling to another country? Why don't we do whatever he wants to do here in, in, our, in our own city? And I could easily justify that and think, you know, yeah, why not? But after reading Romans chapter 15, do you think that the church of Macedonia was asking Paul that question? Paul, why are you leaving Macedonia? Why are you going to Jerusalem? Why don't you do your work here in Macedonia? Do you really think they were questioning Paul? I think not. Paul, why do you have to go to Rome? Why do you have to go to Spain? Why Ephesus? Why Antioch? Heck, why Guatemala, right? No. They didn't question it. In fact, they were eager to help the other churches. And shouldn't we do the same? It was such conviction that came to my heart after, you know, for, for having those thoughts. Um, you know, if Jesse has been called 
to go to Guatemala? Who am I to question us? I should be supporting this, and I question this. Paul and Barnabas were called to, 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 to help start churches, right? To travel. They were missionaries. Who is anybody to question this? Who am I to question this? So Jesse has been called to go to Guatemala. Who am I to question this? I'm not. I shouldn't question it. I have no right to question it. So, I was all in. <laughs> but then, a week or two before we actually flew out, more doubts started to come in. I started to think to myself, you know, why does he want me to go? Because he's so excited, believe me. He was, he was excited that I was going. <laughs> I don't know how to work with metal. I don't know how to build a roof. I've never been on a missionary trip. And he was excited because I speak Spanish, and he, was, he said, we're going to have a translator. But I have no experience translating. <laughs> the only person I speak Spanish to is my mom and clients. I don't think Spanish. I don't dream Spanish. And we ask you to, and I'm like, I, I don't think he understands that I... I don't, I don't translate. Why does he want me to come? L little did I know that God was preparing me for his good work. Let's turn really quick to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Chapter 2, verse 10. For we are, God, we are God's workmanship. I'm sorry. We are God's masterpiece. See, I think I like that one a lot. I would consider myself a masterpiece. Wow. This masterpiece didn't want to go do God's work. So we are God's masterpiece. He has cre created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things. He planned for us long ago. And like I said, again, little did I know that God was preparing me for this trip. And He was preparing me long, long ago. You know, so I started to think, when I was about seven years old, seven, eight years old, you know, my, my parents migrated from Mexico. And I was born here in the States. So growing up, I was my mom's translator. Everywhere we went, a little kid, you know, going to school, I had to translate for my mom. My mom had a doctor's appointment. I had to go with her and translate. When my older siblings got in trouble in school and they got called to the principal's office, I had to go tag along <laughs> and translate. Um, my mom went to a bank account. I went to the bank with her. I translated. I was always translating for my mom. And then I grew up. <laughs> I became a real estate agent. And lo and behold, 70% of my clients are Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, you know, God was preparing me all those years for this special event, right? For a special trip. But I also thought, why did God give me this ability to speak Spanish and, and translate? Was it so that I could make a ton of money in real estate? I think not. So, really quick, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And there's my answer. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 7. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of services, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. So why did God give you the special ability to speak Spanish and English? So that I can help others. He prepared me long ago for this Guatemala trip. Now I understand why Jesse was so excited. Because he doesn't have this gift. Right? <laughs> Even though he tries. See you. <laughs> I 
And then finally, God was going to show me why Jesse was so excited. God was going to show me why Jesse had so much joy for the people of Guatemala. Um, you know, from the first time, or from the first day we arrived in Guatemala, to even to the last day, you know, we were just bombarded with, with love, with hospitality, um, with service. When we got there, you know, I still was, I didn't know what to expect. And then we got to the work site and we started to pray. And remember, I'm the translator. <laughs> so some of them are, they're, they're praying in Spanish and they were thanking God for the missionaries. And that's when it finally hit me. Wow, I'm, I'm a missionary. I can't believe this. And they were so grateful. They were crying because we were there. And they told us how we were the first missionaries this entire, in 2021. No one had gone. In 2020, they had zero missionaries because of COVID. So boy, were they excited to see us. And then in the, in the town of El Estor, we were the first missionaries in 23 years. Extremely excited, and they were so happy to see us. And so now I understand how the Macedonians and um, Jerusalem and all these other cities that Paul was visiting were welcoming and expecting him with, with open arms. That's what it is to us. I felt like the book of Acts. Here we are traveling, and they, they love us. Praise the Lord for that. You know, we had um, Cesar. My brother Cesar, if he's watching, he was our guide. He was um, he was there with us every day. He traveled with us. He uh, he provided for us. But one of the things I noticed about him is that he truly cared about us. He was so concerned. If if any of us said we had a tummy ache, boy, he runs to the store and go get us some medicine. Um, when we were out there working and it was very hot and humid. He'd go out and go buy some electrolytes to make sure that, that, that none, nothing happened to us. Very concerned. I mean, no matter what arose, whatever we needed, if, um, no matter what, if we desired chocolate or something, he'd want to go get it for us. Not that we ever did, but they were, uh, he was extremely hospitable and then just took care of us. And then we had Brother uh, Juanito. Brother Juanito was our, our pilot, he called himself. He was our chauffeur. He took us around everywhere. He had a little bus, a little, little van. Those two guys, I mean, they really, really took care of us. Um, no matter what time or, or what, what day or what night it was, if, if any of us complained about anything, a headache or something, they were out to the store to go get his medicine and, and get his water, make sure we had plenty of water to be drinking and, and food, and they were constantly just, just taking care of us. Um, and then what really impressed me too was the deacon of the church in El Estor. His name was uh, Wilson. Wilson and his family opened their doors to us. We would have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at his house. So his wife, and not only his wife, his family, his sisters, and, and some of his, his family members traveled to come and take care of the missionaries. Morning, lunch, and dinner, they would, they, they would cook for us. You know, uh, handmade tortillas every day. Uh, they just made sure that we weren't at, you know, drinking water. They, 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 they fed us. Um, and they, grew up, they grew up papaya, they gave us papaya, and, and just, they took care of us. I mean, he opened up his house, he was so hospitable to us. And I was just, bombarded with emotion because I felt, would I do that to a missionary in America? Would I call my siblings and say, hey, come and help out. We have a missionary here. You know, we've got to cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner for them. Or we should, or we want to. And we're excited to do so. That's how they work towards us. And then at night, he would allow us to use his house so that we can do a, a, a devotion every night. And they would participate with us. And then Brett would, would sing hymns. And they would participate. 
Um, it was it was just so beautiful. It reminded me of the Book of Acts. Every day we broke bread together. Um, I was just so moved by it. Um, then we had Carlos, who's um, who's who's the man who oversees everything. And Carlos is, I mean, he orchestrated everything. But he really took care of us as well. On our, our, when we finally finished the work, um, he even took a sightseeing, you know, just so that we wouldn't be bored, I, I, I suppose. But it, 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 it just, he, it was just so, he was just so caring. And, and the work that they're doing in Guatemala, just, it's amazing. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. But another thing, um, the Kachi people, you know, um, hospitality. They were, not only that, they were hard workers. When we got there, I thought it was just going to be the six of us building a roof. And I figured, well, I've never built a roof before, never worked with any metal. We'll see. And just like, oh yeah, I'm ready to cut metal. You know what? I didn't have to cut metal because the Kachi people were so eager to help. They didn't even want me touching the machine. They wanted to do it. And they would bring me a chair. And I'm like, no, 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 no way am I taking a chair. <laughs> um, they were just so, um, they honored us. And we went there to bless them. I got blessed. Okay, but I did get to learn a lot about them. Um, every day they would make us these life water, they called it. I think it was like rice water. <laughs> But since it was so hot, they wanted to make sure that we were hydrated, so they brought us, they called it life water. Um, they're extremely humble. They love Jesus. Um, their boys, I mean, their youth, were, were there helping. We must have had 30, you know, 30 people total there helping us. Um, they fed us fruit every day. They fed us live chickens. I mean, they, they had chickens there, and and one of, one of the days they... They weren't live anymore. They weren't live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> fresh, fresh fish from, from, from the lake. Oh, yeah. Um, it was love in action. And I was deeply moved. It just made me think that, you know, I, I thought I was pretty loving until I saw their love in action. I mean, it raised a whole new level for me, thinking, would I do this to missionaries in America? I kept asking myself that. Um, it reminded me so much, again, like, like the book of Acts, I keep saying that, but, you know, what they ate together. Um, the Kachis were there to help, to help us, but they're there to help their pastor build a roof on his home. So they, you know, they were all there, pulling together to help. And so I talked, I, I, I since I'm the one that spoke Spanish, I, came, I got to talk to them. And they said that, that that was normal for them. When someone buys a house, they all get together and they help them paint the house. They help them move in. Um, if someone needs to build a house, they're all there to help. Um, they're, they're like family. They break bread together. Another thing that I noticed was that as they walked into their church, they would all walk in, and then they come and they kneel at the altar before they sit down at the chair. And I'm like, okay. So I asked Winslow, is that common? He goes, everybody that walks in goes to the altar. You know what they're doing? They're examining themselves before they come to, before they come to the Lord, before the Lord. So they come and they examine themselves. Is there sin in my heart? Let me confess it. You know how Jesus said, if someone has something against you, make sure you leave, that at the, I mean, leave your gift at the altar and go make peace. That's what they're doing. They get on their knees before service starts to make sure they're okay. Praise God for that. Um, Brother Martin, he's one of the founders Talked to him for a while, and one of the things that that uh, stuck with me was he was I asked him how he got the church started. I mean, they had quite a few, quite a lot of people there, and one of the things he mentioned is that that I really love. It reminded me again of the Book of Acts when 
when uh, the apostles are looking for, for someone to serve, right? They just didn't pick anybody. They, 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 they chose people that were filled with the Holy Spirit. And so Martin told me the same thing about their church. He said, you know, there's, there's two types of people. Some people, th these were his words, he said, it goes aquí, and it goes aquí. Meaning that they listen to the word, God's word, and the ones that, that, that actually produce fruit, those are the ones they use for ministry. I thought, amazing. In America, we use talent. It, it, it really was. I said, these guys are living in the book of Acts. It was just beautiful. I was so, I was just so impressed with the Lord and what he's doing there. Um, but to sum it all up, <laughs> let's go to Philippians chapter 1. And this is, I understand what Paul is feeling here. What Jesse was feeling. What I now feel. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse, verse 3. Paul said this about the Philippians. And so I say this about the what you know the Kachis in Guatemala. I'm sure Jesse feels this way and, and Dwayne and, and the rest of the guys. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request for you all with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now, and I am certain that God, who began a good work within you, will continue to work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ returns. So it is right that I should feel as I do about you all, for you have a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. And before we came, Jesse kept saying, my heart is in Guatemala. And we all started singing just a little song we made up about how our heart was in Guatemala. But you know, I started to understand why he was feeling the way he was feeling. And, and so now I feel the same way. And so, Jesse, if I didn't apologize to you once, I apologize now. But you know, you know, once we were, at, we were in bed, we were uh, three of us slept in, in, in a room. It was Brett, myself, and, and Jesse. And we're laying there, and I just, I turned to him and, you know, thank you so much for inviting me. I, how could I, I, I have second thoughts about this. It was amazing, amazing trip. So with that said, uh, I'm, I'm done with my testimony. I'm going to share, Jay sent me a video from Washington. So I'd like you to listen to Jay's. you guys a lot. We're up here in Washington, all settled in. Um, the Lord's blessed um, our comings and goings, and um, we're doing well. Um, Jesse asked me to share about the Guatemala missions trip from my point of view and all that I experienced, and I could probably go on for a couple hours <laughs> to share everything, but um, I'll do my best to get it done in a couple minutes here. But uh, starting out, um, I just want to say really put everything together. He put it in my heart just to have a desire to go and do missions, um, specifically to do mission work where I get to use the skills I've learned in construction and the trades um, and put that into practice to build his kingdom. And I heard about, you know, short-term mission trips, people going and building houses, churches and other things, but I um, never had the opportunity to go myself. So I was super excited when Jesse asked me to go to Guatemala. And uh, once that happened, um, the Lord just put things into play. Um, he provided the funding through the association and other people just to get behind me and send me out. Very thankful for that. Um, he provided the timing and the team. <laughs> he really put our team together. Some of us were like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but the Lord always knows better and knows 
exactly what he's doing. Um, and when we look back, we sure can see that. Um, so starting off with that trip now, the flight there was middle of the night. We were tired, but excited. Um, we touched down, get off the airplane, and I'm kind of anxious. and kind of like, oh, what's going on? You know, culture and environment, but felt at peace um, once we got off the plane and was excited for the whole ordeal. And we hopped on the shuttle, went to that House of Blessing, met Carlos and the others. And uh, the, the, the House of Blessing is just an amazing place where uh, you feel welcomed, you feel the presence of God there. And uh, yeah, it was super awesome to just meet everyone there and be there. Um, going out to the Kachi Indian Church and meet the pastor and see the building site, that was super awesome. Um, we knew we had our work cut out for us. Um, from getting all the materials, uh, getting that plan laid out, and getting everything built. Um, it was pretty uh, daunting at first um, with material gathering. You know, we're kind of like, oh, where do we go? Some people didn't want to get as much stuff as we were thinking, but the Lord worked it all out to where within a few days of working, um, we had the roof on and it was complete. Um, it was really neat working with the locals and being able to, with a language barrier even, just grow in friendship and work alongside them and share in worship together and study together and food. Um, we're blessed with amazing food the whole time. A well, little too much sometimes, but uh, it was great. Um, I can't really describe the, the special moment where we all got to sit and worship and uh, to take part in the church service there. Um, though we didn't understand quite a few words, uh, Brett Ponzi did, but us other guys not so much. Um, it was super amazing just to see the spirit move and to worship alongside our brothers and sisters there. Um, in that time, on the way back from the airport, um, we were just super, uh, I guess, on a spiritual uh, coffee trip, a spiritual caffeine rush where we really were just hyped up about what the Lord's doing and what his work is um, in our lives, um, what we saw him do there with the build and everything. So, uh, you know, me and Brett were sitting together on the way back and coming into the airport even, we're just sharing the gospel with uh, people that we were around and sitting with on the plane and the Lord really moved there. And finally, um, the last things I would add is even if you don't think that you can uh, necessarily contribute something important in your mind to mission work or the, the kingdom of God, that's, that's a lie. We're all blessed and gifted in special ways. Romans uh, chapter 12, verses 3 through 8 say, God has dealt to each one measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the same members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ, and individually are members one of another. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. We all have our function and purpose in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God, and I'd encourage you to pray and to seek the Lord and see how he would have you use those gifts because we're called to use them. And they're all indispensable and important to the kingdom and what the Lord wants to do here on earth. Um, so I hope that encourages you all. Uh, remember to go out and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation as we're commanded to in Mark 16, 15. And we love you all, and I can't wait to hopefully see more of you on the next missions trip in December. And, you know, wherever else the Lord may lead you to do mission work, do it. It's a blessing, and I can't express how much um, excitement, thrill, um, honor, and just a depth of relationship with God that you grow in when you go on mission and a lot of time to use you. Love you guys all.
guys. And then when it hey Jace, if you're watching. And everyone else. I just wanted to share how great the Guatemala trip was as well. I didn't know what I was getting myself into either. <laughs> uh, I was asked, hey Brett, do you want to go to Guatemala? And I didn't know whether or not to say yes or no. And, and Jesse said, hey, if God puts it in your heart to say yes, then, then say yes. So I just prayed about it and the word yes came into my heart. But um, when it came to the, the trip, I went with a different mindset than Ponzi. You know, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do over there. You know, what am I doing? No, I don't. Yeah, I thought, hey, I, I'm going to look up everything that I need to know. I'm going <laughs> to, I've worked at the Home Depot. You know, I know about tools. I know about this. <laughs> I'll be fine. And, and um, you know, I've, I've learned that, um, yeah, that, Having intellect is much different than having experience. <laughs> yes. yeah. We, it was great. We, you know, we showed up, and it was great being fed and everything like that, and getting to know and interact and things like that. And but then we started putting the plan together for the roof, and my, I was just so eager to to do what I wanted to do, and, you know, oh, I want to, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, instead of having the heart of a child, you know, because the children, like Ponte was describing, they would wait, they, they were waiting there, and when you called them, hey, come over here, all of them would just run to, to go help you, even if it was carrying 30, 40 pound boxes, dragging them all the way to the car, things like that, and instead I was... I made the mistake of doing what I wanted to do and trying to do my own thing. And I realized uh, I was getting upset when I wasn't getting called sometimes to do what I wanted to do. And, and, um, and uh, after, a couple, after a couple hours, after a couple days, I saw that a whole lot of children there just having fun and sitting there bored. And I'm like, you know, instead of being upset, Brett, why don't you go do something that, that you know, you have experience with and that you're good at, and that's spending time with children. I mean, your guitar is right over there, Brett. And, you know, because in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that says that God has works prepared beforehand. I've, I started playing the guitar well, my first instrument that I started learning was the accordion at the age of eight, but I blew that off being eight years old. And, <laughs> and I started learning the guitar at 13 and have been playing since then. And I went on a missions trip twice to Mexico, and if you look at the pictures, I don't remember the experience, but I'm just surrounded by children, and I'm being a complete goofball there. <laughs> as well. And so it was, it was great. The Lord showing me, right, you're not here for this, you're here for that. Stop trying to be a hand when you're a foot, you know, mm -hmm. stop trying to, and yeah, I started to really, yeah, it was great, the, the Lord convicted me of that, and, and I, had, I, hadn't, I hadn't spent time with children like that in a long time, it was great. Yeah, we discovered his gift there. Oh, yeah. he, he brings out his guitar, and next thing you know, all the little kids are around him, and, and they're all clapping. And, and then the pastor that there, Pastor Pedro, seeing, you know, a Brett playing the guitar and, and taking care of the kids, he asked him, can you guys come on Thursday, and can you sing the song at, during service for us? So they, and when I saw Brett play at, at the church there, I thought, boy, there's his gift. I think we discovered his gift. 
It is beautiful to see. Um, can I, now I'll uh, bring Brother Dwayne to, to share a quick testimony. Merced. Last summer, Dr. Earls uh, asked, invited me to go on this mission trip with Jesse. He told me it was a, a, a construction trip. I'm not a construction worker. I don't know those skills. You know? And he, said, he, admitted he was the same way. And so I said, yeah, I'll go, let go, but I'll help. You know, I, I pulled wires for my dad when I was a kid and did stuff. And a couple months later, Jesse called up say, you know, we're getting ready. You know, here's a list of things that I want you to bring. I'm going, wow. <laughs> uh, candy, toys, gloves, tools. And he says, well, I'm not bringing most of those tools because I don't know what they're going to need. So I loaded up on candy and toys and gloves and goggles and measuring trips and took a few pairs of, you know, un unused pants that I had. Um, and I went, and I was, you know, went with the intent to be just a support worker um, and backup. You know, Ponzi and I would cut, cut and organize the metals, supervise the uh, locals to do that. And we got there. The locals wanted to do everything. They wouldn't even let us carry our boxes and stuff. They didn't have a um, but we organized things and. My main job sort of became the uh, passing out the, the goodies. <laughs> the, uh, the candy, the toys, the gloves, the goggles. The kids and adults, their eyes lit up and they uh, were happy with whatever they did. I mean, I never thought a pack of, you know, five string spearmint bubblegum would be my, but those kids thought it was gold. Mm -hmm. And and they would run up to us, you know, and when we started opening these bags up and giving them stuff. So it was, you know, they were getting, you know, Christmas every day there. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, they worked and stuff and they, you know, I've seen Jesse and Brett and others on the roof and working hard and, you know, getting sunstroke. <laughs> yeah, I'm down on the ground with Ponzi doing, you know, the easy stuff. But we all, it all played together to make a happy and sort of thing. The, uh, you know, I learned about roofing. Um, and I learned how, you know, you know, just being there helped those people who were happy. And by assisting, you know, and you know, being in the background, you know, you don't have to be the star to be have an impact. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was happy to be there. I would, you know, I would be willing to go back again to Guatemala or wherever on another mission trip. And I told our church that, you know, you know, we give money, we give uh, materials to organizations and stuff. But until you actually go and do it, you don't really receive the benefit of being a missionary. And I never thought of myself as a missionary, just someone being helpful. And I can see, you know, how, you know, being a part of the team had benefits mm -hmm. just for, not while we're there, but, you know, it's going to be long-lasting contributions for the Guatemala people. Yes. So it was fun and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So he actually listened to Jesse and brought the goodies. I had told you that I didn't listen. So I missed out on on handing out the goodies and having the kids around me. You know, Jesse and Dwayne were, you know, the, all the kids were around them. In fact, they even called Jesse Santa Claus. <laughs> so um, before I call Jesse, I have a five minute video I'm gonna show you really quick. That way you can put a little bit of pictures, you know, to what we're talking about. So, um, let me get a video here for you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 
would do that. <laughs> Guatemala, here we come. <laughs> Thank you. 
escrito en esta guía del profeta Ella. I'm going to upload the, uh, the entire documentary, it's like 30 minutes, so you guys can have date night with your wives and go to YouTube and watch our, uh, our, our whole video. Thank you so much, Fonsi. And, uh, you know, the only member of our team that we didn't get to hear from was, was Rod Earls, and that's because he's actually uh, preaching down in uh, Winton today. One of our other pastors, uh, Gary Martin, keep him in prayer. I think he has uh, pneumonia, or he's having, you know, he's not able to be there. So Rod is filling in, but Rod sends his love too. Otherwise, he would have been here. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, well, one, first of all, it's hard to, just the emotions. It's amazing what a, what a video or pictures will do, right? Just watching that, I mean... Yeah, you know, it brings tears to my eyes. This is so joyous. It was such, like Ponzi said, such a joy to have the honor and the privilege to be there and do that. And it's kind of funny. Uh, Ponzi, I, I ran into him yesterday. Uh, we live on the same, off the same street, off Merle. And uh, I was taking a walk, and uh, I called him earlier, and I'm like, hey, when you get done calling me, so he calls me while I was right outside his house. So I, on the phone, I just walk up and knock on his door. I'm like, hey, I'm at your door. <laughs> so he made me some coffee. We talked for a few minutes, and I said, hey, how's it going? You got everything, you ready tomorrow? You got everything put together? He goes, yeah. You know, and he says, um, he goes, you know, one thing I, I'm thinking, and, and part of it was like, I was thinking, why Guatemala? And I asked you, and, uh, you know, you gave me a really good answer. You know, what, um, do you remember what you told me? I go, no, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> and I go, well, maybe I, I can think of something, but uh, I go, I don't know. I go, I don't know what I said, why, what I told you. But, um, but it's funny, since and then I left and I started thinking, that's a good question. I'm sure I, I guess I had a good answer, but whatever it was, I can't remember. So I guess I'll think about either the same or a new answer. And, um, and really, you know, it's almost to me, um, if you have to say, it, to me, it's almost the wrong, it's almost the wrong question. Why Guatemala? Um, you know, it's, the question is not, Guatemala or any specific place, it's, the question is, am I being led by the Lord? And because even in the video clip, uh, Ponte included a little short clip of when I was preaching, they asked me to preach at the church Thursday night, and Ponte translated, and I said, hey, I'm going to tell you a story, a story of how I find myself in El Astor, Guatemala, in this church, preaching to you. How did I get here? Well, I never, like, took a globe and said, I feel like God called me to be a missionary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the globe, and then, and then I'll just put my finger, and wherever it hits, I'll be like, that's the country that God sent me to. And it wasn't like that, right? The way, the way I ended up going to Guatemala the first time and each time after, you know, I was just serving God at Life Point Church in Keys. And at the time, we hadn't even moved to Keys. We were in series still. And uh, just do what God called me to do. Be part of the body of Christ. Show up. Worship Him. Minister with other believers. And what happened is, Nathan, he came up to me and said, hey, uh, they're doing a mission trip to Guatemala. I think you might be, you know, we're going to build stuff. You might be good. You want to go? And I just kind of look at him and he's a, he's a diesel mechanic, auto mechanic. He's a, uh, you know, he's a, a builder. 
And I said, well, yeah, you know, uh, sounds cool. I'll pray about it. Yeah, it might be the thing, you know. And I prayed about it. It's just like bread. How did I end up going? Someone invited me. And, you know, and I said, yes. And I said, let me pray about it. Let me see if God says no. Because if he doesn't say no, I'm going to say yeah. And I believe he'll provide the funds in the way. And sure enough, he did. And so, and so that's, you know, and, I, and it's like, well, why are you the pastor at um, Oasis of Hope Church in Riverbank? Why there? I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't take a map of Stanislaus County and throw darts and say, oh, I think God's going to want me to be a pastor. Where should I be? Toom, you know, and land on, out here on Claus Road in Santa Fe or whatever. And No. What was I doing? Simply following the call of God. And God led me step by step. You know, that's how I found myself. And so... Uh, and, and, and I want to tell you, it's not an either or proposition. And a lot of times that's, that's like how we like to simplify or understand or try to break things down. We think it's got to be this either or proposition. And that's not biblical. It's not the, what we see the mandate is. But we think, oh, um, you know, uh, I'll be a missionary to Guatemala. But and then when I get back here, I, you know won't participate. Well, that sounds weird, right? That sounds kind of like, really? Or, hey, I'm not going to waste funds or resources to go to Guatemala. I, I've got, there's a whole world to be reached right here. True, but so you're going to neglect. You know, it's not, we, it's not an either or. It's a both and proposition. It's Jerusalem Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And when you look in Revelation, you know, chapter 7, verse 9, John said, I looked and I saw a great crowd of people in white robes from every tongue, every tribe, every nation that was standing before the throne and worshiping God. And so... It's not about us saying we should just stop ourselves right there. It's not about us. It's not about our plan, our agenda, what we think. Jesus said reach the whole world. And, and for every missionary, if you truly view yourself, in which we're all called to the mission, by the way, if you don't see yourself as a missionary, you need to go back and read, read the Bible again. And you need to realize, as the Father has sent Jesus, so I now send you, John chapter 20, receive you the Holy Spirit. Right? But um, we need to, yeah, not think um, our, own, our own intellect, our own agenda we serve God here, and, and every missionary, uh, you would, you're a, kind of a pitiful missionary if you're like, yes, I can commit to being a missionary, you know, for one week out of the year, or two weeks, or whatever, on a short term, and then that's it. But I won't cross the street to talk to my neighbor. I don't think you should even get on the plane. I think you should just send your money and pray for God to change your heart. <laughs> Give your money, because other people have got the right heart. <laughs> but... I can say for every person on our team, you know, we're, we're talking to our neighbor, we're talking to our coworker, and we're asking God. So me as the pastor of this church, I'm asking God, how do I reach Riverbank? Because I'm not that smart. But the good news is I don't have to be that smart. Like, I don't have to figure out how to get to Ellis store and build a roof so that it makes a difference for a community. God already has all that figured out. I just have to show up, you know? Do we have the willingness, you know? And, and you heard it multiple times. You know, you heard it from Ponzi. You heard it from Brett. You heard it from Dwayne. What in the world am I doing? Why am I going on a mission trip? You know, to, to do construction or whatever, or, or maybe I don't have the skills, whatever. 
And, you know, I want you to take their testimony serious. And, and here's the truth, is that you have, you know, uh, Jay shared it. You know, Brad shared it. They all shared it. Um, God has distributed various gifts to each one of us to be used to love one another. You know, and I love that he brought up, um, we're to do good to all, especially to the household of faith. Right? And was it right for us to go to Guatemala and show how loved do you think that pastor felt and his family? That six guys supported by several churches and a whole association and personal people giving their time, money, their, their, their resources, and they traveled all the way to El Astor to build the roof on his house. How, how much value do you think that had for him, their church, and their community? How much uh, you know, mileage do you think God can get out of that? God can get a lot of my mileage out of, out of doing that. And, and yes, we want to do that. We want to do that here. And we want to do it locally, regionally, and we want to do it across the world and wherever God, wherever God would show us. And so I love what Ponce said. He said, hey, you know, God had prepared him, called him, and didn't let him off the hook. And when he showed up, he realized, God had prepared me for this exact, for this moment. He handcrafted this and called me to do this. This was no accident. Same thing, you know, uh, you know, with Brett. It wasn't just the children. From the moment Brett struck the first chord on the first night at the House of Blessing for our devotional, I felt like weeping. You know, and in fact, I did, I did cry. You know, and Brett has an amazing gift. God really highlighted it and said, "You're, you're ready." And, and for me, I. Like I, I heard Brett play before, and I don't know why, but it's not that I didn't think he was gifted or skilled or didn't appreciate it, but I kind of didn't appreciate it. But when I, I don't know, when I heard it, I was like, whoa, Brett is a serious worship leader. And I talked to him, he told me about how much he's invested, how he studied, how he learned, how he studied music at MJC. God gifted and prepared him and then he has, then he walks with God and he has the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so when he strikes that first chord, I'm like, Holy Spirit's in the room. God's pretty pleased. He's getting worship. He's getting a lot of glory right now. This is awesome. You know, you know, Dwayne, I look down, I see him and Ponce just really excitedly talking about, okay, so after we cut these. Then they're going to go, and then they'll put them, they'll build this, and they'll do that, and then we got to get these ones. And I look down, and they're just having this intense discussion about cutting the metal studs with all the guys down there. And I think in my mind, this is total lion. You know, Dwayne's like, oh, I'm going to be a gopher, but he's, no, he's down there total. He's like, he's in it to win it. He's got total lion with Ponzi. And then to see the joy of all the kids hugging him and swarming him and the message he could take back to his church to invite others. You know, that's, it's kind of like one hand to Jesus, one hand also inviting others to do his work, right? Two hands. But um, if I can express it, you know, and I can stress it, take, take serious, uh, the testimony and the invitation. Take it serious when when I tell you and I'm asking you and I say, when I tell you, do you know how amazing it would be if a group of ladies would go with us to the construction mission strip? You're like, what? <laughs> and you show up and you say, hey, on Wednesday, we have the resources and we're gonna buy Little Caesar's Pizza you know, because they got little Caesars. And, and, and that means all the women aren't going to have to cook. But what it means is, you've got a break from cooking, 
And then we're gonna we're gonna do your hair and your nails. And we're gonna make you feel special and beautiful and appreciated. You think those women would ever forget that team that came from you know from California? Remember that one time? They all showed up and they totally surprised us. And they bought us a nice, you know, food and a meal. And they said, we don't want you working. We have a special time plan for you. And it could be something different. It could be whatever. What I'm saying is, do you have skills? Do you know how to do that? And, and like Ponzi said, until he went, sometimes you just got to go down there and listen to the Lord if the Lord is calling you. And then the light will go on and you'll get it. And you'll never be the same. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, they're telling me about missions again. I know it's wonderful. And then you're just like, whatever, you know, what's next? Or what's it going to be over? I like the video, but I'm just telling you, whatever God's calling you to participate in, um, you're really doing yourself a disservice. No wonder if you ever fill up and you're like, yeah, church is boring. Well, it's probably because you're not participating. And maybe no one's done a good job of inviting you. But around here, if you come here long enough, we're going to invite you, you know, quit pressuring me to participate. Well, go down to the go go down the road to another church where you can just sit there and do nothing and just show up and fall asleep on the pew and give your money. You can find churches like that, you know, if you want them. But we're we want it, we think that it's more exciting to participate than spectate. And sometimes you just have to, you know, Ponzi, he invited us to go to the to the marriage conference. And I was kind of like, eh. But then I was like, well, yeah, I believe in marriage, you know. Yeah, I, did. I want a good marriage. And then I said, you know what? I should, uh, I, should, I should practice what I preach. I invited him to go to Guatemala. Well, maybe I should. And he said, yes. Well, maybe I should go to the marriage conference because he asked me. And so I did. You know, and I was blessed because I did. If I didn't show up, you know, I wouldn't have so that's 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 the message is we need to not limit God. We need to to say yes to God. He's not going to call that. Don't worry. He's not going to call every single person to physically go. But he's going to call you to participate in something. He's going to call you to personally show up and get your hand on the plow and do it. And if you will, you know, you'll you'll find the greatest joy of service, you know, you'll be, your mind will be blown away. I'm so glad that God loved me so much that he would call me, that he would prepare these good works, that it doesn't have to be, this is the greatest life to live. It's not a cliche, it's not whatever, but it means you have to uh, step out of the boat. Like Peter, you gotta get out on the water. You gotta have some faith. You have to have some trust. And you need to, Go ahead and listen to someone who's inviting you. Maybe God's using that person. Yeah, we were out lunch. We're like, I looked across the table. We're eating burritos and tacos. I'm like, Brett, I think you should go to Guatemala. Oh, yeah. Right? And so that, that was the initial. And so he said, let's do it. I asked Ponzi. Ponzi responded to the call. Jace. Awesome. You know, Jace went. Dwayne listened to Rod. God built a, an amazing team. You know, and God wants to do amazing things to that joy, to that caliber right here where we have our pictures of. So if you're in here and you're part of this church and you're thinking, yeah, but what? It's awesome, I know, but what are, we, what are you doing right here? Well, I, I believe that same thing, we don't have to have all the answers, but God is so much more creative. We just have to obey Him and follow Him and seek Him and say, we want you to do that here. We want to have our story here. We want to have people praising God that we showed up, that we walked across the street, or we went to our own backyard. And I believe and know that God is going to do that, and He's going to use us, and so we need to be responsive and open to the call. And we just need to, yeah, follow, you know, follow and listen, you know, and 
he also talked about um, the joy of the prayers and all that. You know, we had a moment where it was super intense. You know, we had me and uh, you know uh, the pastor and Ponzi and uh, the founder Martine and another Martine and a couple guys and we were kind of talking about what we felt about leaving all the tools and the vision for them to help build and do for others and give them the resources so that they could complete anything they had there and then go serve someone else. And, and we, we all huddled, like in a huddle, and we started praying in English and Spanish and Kachi, and it's like a dam broke. And we were literally like weeping you know, all of us, every single person weeping, you know, grown men just crying and praising God. It's like when you, it's like when you read about Paul with the Ephesian elders and they all knelt down on the, on the shore and they knew it'd be the last time they ever saw Paul. And he said, you know, the Holy Spirit has told me that everywhere I go, tribulations and chains await me and I'll never, I'll never see you again, you know. And they knew it, and they all knelt down, and they, they wept and embraced each other and prayed. I mean, it was like the intensity, like you read that, and then to be there, building this with those guys in that moment. Um, but I'm saying those moments, uh, we, I believe we're going to experience those things here, and it's going to build God's kingdom. And so that's what, that's why I get so excited about about missions is because it's not just about it makes you think come back and say God do it here because I can only be there as much as I love it it's wonderful and everything hey I can only go there once a year or whatever it is however much he calls us and and gives us the resources but I could be here 51 weeks a year you know I'm here all the time but what am I doing and so I want to be that kind of church where they, they, they know Oasis is the church that does whatever, you know, that buys all the girls' prom dresses and tuxes for the high school that can't afford it, or whatever it is, whatever, you know, buys backpacks, or whatever way, whatever vision God gives us to carry out the mission, but then we do it wholeheartedly, and then they're like, yeah, that's a little church over there, but that's that little church that serves their community in real, meaningful, tangible ways. So if you're worried about whether I want to reach this community or I want to reach the whole world, we didn't go through the book of Acts so that we could just pick and choose what we want to do and get excited about some of it, not the other. I want to get excited about all of it, about Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. I'm excited about what God's doing here. You know, he's bringing people and he's creating and he's equipping us to be a place where we can love and serve and reach out. You know, we've got a good core right here of leadership, people with gifts and talents and real, you know, seriousness about, and we want to see another move. We want to see God move like he did, you know, through the Jesus movement, through Calvary Chapel, through whatever, and I don't care what era or what part of church history you know, when they, we need to read about the moves of God, the great awakenings, and we need to read about the revivals, and we need to remember our church history and know that God can move through whatever, uh, you know, denomination, movement, person, whatever. If it's an act of the Holy Spirit and God, people are going to go down like dominoes and they're going to want to join, you know, whether it's through the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Tabernacle, Jim Cimbala, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, people getting saved, you know, whether it's through the Puritans in the 1600s, 1700s, or whatever, or I don't care who you want to pick, George Whitefield, just go ahead and pick your heroes, read about it, get excited, read the Bible, decide you're going to live the Bible, you know, hold me to it, I'll hold you to it. And say, are we really living it out? Yeah, we want to live the book of Acts right here, you know, in Riverbank and in Stanislaus County. And we want to do it in Guatemala and wherever God would send us. That's where we want to do it. You know, otherwise, 
Why, why even show up, you know? If we don't really want to live it out and believe it, I don't want to just, just preach this for nothing, for myself or for you. And we don't. You know, but I want to encourage us and say, God wants to do a brand new thing. God's like, hey, I'll put rivers in the desert, right? That's what God does. That's his specialty, to do the impossible in our own families, in our you know, workplaces, our communities, and anywhere he so chooses. And so going out there, your deacon's forever changed. The deacon's not the same man when he came back. His heart's been transformed. You know, Brett, you know, Dwayne and his church, Jace, me, Rod, those of you. And so whatever God, whatever he calls us to, you know, unless God's telling you no, you know, or you, you know, if you know he's calling you to do it, let's, let's do it. Um, I don't think that was all the videos, right? Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to just, I'll close us in prayer. I thank you for your patience. I know we went long, but I think it's important to have a, we've been kind of waiting. We've got you know, people not here, people sick, whatever. Hey, man, this is our day to talk about Guatemala and just lay it out there and lay the challenge out too from the scriptures. Go back to the scriptures and read Mark 16. You know, read Acts chapter 1. You know, Acts chapter 2. Read the ones that, you know, Paulus and the other guys mentioned. Know that you're created for good works in Christ Jesus, which he prepared in advance for you to walk in and our joy is to discover what are, what's the next good works he's got for us. And then roll up our sleeves and in the power of the Holy Spirit in our preparation, go for it. That's what he's created us to do. So let's, let's bow our heads we'll close in prayer. Lord, just thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the video, you know, Paul's put together, for the guy's testimony, and uh, Lord, everything that you did and what you're still doing, and uh, Lord, it always pays way more dividends than we can imagine um, when we, we don't, we don't want to do our plan. We want to do your plan, and we want to just, we want to have those moments where we think, well, how did I even get here? Well, you know what? It was God, because otherwise I could never, I would have never been here. And then you realize God led me to this moment. And God lead us to that, to those moments here at Riverbank, where we look around and go, This is awesome. Do you see all these people who live right here? And guess what? I don't have to even learn another language. Because they speak English and so do I. Lord do great things for your glory and Lord to build your kingdom and to save people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.